Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema. Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph. Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Good afternoon, Itulai learners. Okay, welcome to your online tutorial today. I am Tutor Dick, and I will be your guide for your uh, online tutorial class for 21st century literature from the Philippines and from the world. So good afternoon to the DepEd uh, online TV staff, uh, DepEd Educational Technology Unit, and all the people who make this uh, Project a huge success. Uh, magandang hapo po sa inyo natin. To our parents, and of course, to my co-teachers, and of course, sa ating pong mga mag itulay learner. So let us begin our uh, tutorial for today. Uh, from, from quarter one, week one of 21st century literature from the Philippines and from the world. So for today, learners, we have uh, two objectives, okay, for this tutorial class. Number one is Identify geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine history, literary history, rather, from pre-colonial to contemporary and representative texts from the regions. We will be having representative texts from the regions, uh, from certain regions uh, a little while. And of course, the second one would be, we'll try our best to write a close analysis and critical interpretation, very important, of literary texts. We'll be choosing uh, some representative texts from uh, I think I chose today uh, region one, okay? Again, number one is identify geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to contemporary and representative texts from the regions. And the second one would be write a close analysis and critical interpretation of literary texts. So are you ready 
to go with me on a stroll down the memory lane, okay, in our uh, Philippine literary history. Let us begin with the very first period, the pre-Spanish literature or the pre-colonial period, wherein uh, still don't have the conqueror. <laughs> it's called the pre-Spanish literature because the Spanish haven't arrived yet in the Philippines. So what would be the general characteristics of this time period? We have number one, the folk tales. So these are made up stories about life, adventure, love, honor, and humor where one can derive lessons. This period is also known as the epic age. Okay, you remember the epics? Epics are long narrative poems in which a series of heroic achievements or events, usually of a hero, are dealt with at length. This also usually involves supernatural or godlike powers on the part of the hero, if you're uh, fond of these kinds of stories. If you do remember Biag Dinam Ang by Pedro Bucaneg, one of my uh, most favorite uh, epic from the Ilocano region. Uh, yes, and, uh, from Pedro Bucaneg, uh, The Life of Lam Ang. Pedro Bucaneg, Biag Dinam Ang. Also, we have here folk songs. These are one of the oldest forms of Philippine literature that emerged in the pre-Spanish period. These songs mirrored the early forms of culture. Many of these have 12 syllables, examples of which are kundiman, kumintang, or tagumpay, dalit, or imno, oyai, or heli, the lullaby, diana, or solerni, and kalindao. And after the pre-Spanish uh, period, we have the arrival of the Spaniards, the Spanish period from 1521 to 1872. Roughly speaking, it started with 1521. And about now, uh, March, I think it's somewhere in March, uh, sometime in March rather. So literature this period may be classified as religious prose and poetry and secular prose and poetry. Also, we talk about the Spanish influences on Philippine literature during this period, beginning with the Philippine alphabet from the Alibata, our original, alphabet was replaced by the Roman alphabet. Also, the teaching of the Christian doctrine became the basis of religious practices. European legends and traditions brought here became assimilated our songs in the form of burrito. And of course, the never ending battle between the Muslims and the Christians, the Moro Moro. Okay. We also had folk songs at this time, uh, songs that manifest the artistic feelings of the Filipinos and shows their in, uh, show their innate appreciation for and love of beauty. The examples are our favorites, Leron Leron Sinta, Pamuri Nawen, Dandan Soy, Sarong Banggi, and Atin Kupung Sing Sing. Um, I grew up in some uh, in Santa Cruz, Zambales, and we had our own taste of our folk songs there, but these uh, are one of my favorites. We also had the recreational plays on stage. There were many recreational plays performed by Filipinos during the Spanish time. If you're familiar with this, we have them in the poetic form such as the Sinacolo, which we are also uh, celebrating or performing nowadays, the Panuniluyan, Salubong, and of course, the, uh, the grandmother of the uh, soap operas, the Sarasuela, or the, the musicals of the soul love. The period of enlightenment from 1872 to 1898, the rise of the Ilustrados, which were, uh, who are Filipino intellectuals educated in Europe. And because we had Ilustrados at this time, we'll now go back to the time of the propaganda movement. Uh, the movement that flourished from 1872 to 1896. If you're familiar with this movement, this was spearheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class like our own very, uh, our very own Jose Rizal, Marcelo del Pilar, Graciano Lopez Haina, Antonio Luna, Marciano Ponce, Jose Maria Panginiban, and Pedro Paterno. Some of their writings are here. Let's begin with Rizal's. Of course, Noli Mitangre and its uh, partner, El Telibusterismo, whose poems, Mi Ultimo Adios, um, essays like Sobre la Indolencia de los Filipinos, and the Filipinas Dentro de Cien Anos. And uh, I think we'll have the, some of Del Pilar's writings would be Pag-ibig sa Tinubuong Lupa, Love the Country, Kaingat Kayo, Dasalan at Toktohan, Prayers and Jokes. 
and we have highness writing here ang fry butod or the the, the friar butod which is a satirical uh writing about the the friars of that time the spanish friars specifically that he had a fraile the child of the friar everything is humbug everything is a mere show sa mga pilipino 1891 ang talumpating columbus it's an oration to commemorate columbus and then uh after of course uh under uh the spanish regime for 333 years to be exact now comes in the Americans, okay, during the 1898 to 1944, they flourished here in the Philippines and they also influenced our literature. So the languages used in writing during this time were Spanish and Tagalog still, and the dialects of the different regions. But the writers in Tagalog continued their lamentations on the conditions of the country since we had uh, the slavery period and their attempts to arouse love, once love for the native tongue and the writers in English imitated the themes and method of the Americans since they are already flourishing here. And uh, while the Americans were still here, along come the Japanese, 1941 to 1945, one of the darkest years of our history and of course of our literature. And during this time, the Filipino poetry, uh, its common theme would be of course, uh, the Japanese occupation, national and nationalism, country, love, and life in the barrio, faith, religion, and the arts. The most common types of uh, poems during this time would be, of course, we have the haiku and the tanaga and the karaniwa anyo. The haiku and the tanaga are the partners, but what's the difference between them is, both, is that haiku is three verse with 17 uh, up to made up of 17 syllables divided in three lines. Its partner is Tanaga is short, but had, had, had measure and rhyme. So basically that's the difference between the two. Three verse, Misa, Tanaga is, has measure and rhyme. And of course the usual uh, form, the common during the Spanish would be the Karimuanya. 1941 still to 1945, uh, uh, a closer look at Philippine literature in English. At this time, uh, many books were published both in Filipino and in English. Most themes in writings dealt with Japanese brutalities. Very fresh pa po sa atin ang mga brutalities ito at this time. And the poverty of life under the Japanese government and the great guerrilla exploits. Okay? And we're about to be freed here again by the Americans, of course. So next in line uh, would to this period would be the period of activism, okay? Dekada Setenta, okay, you remember the film? Okay. This will now have the literary revolution. And naalala nyo po ang film being starring Fiola Pascual, and you totally understand this because the literary revolution, the youth became vocal with their sentiments. They demanded a change in the government. It was manifested in the bloody demonstrations if you have seen in the film, and the sidewalk expression is also in literature. Okay, mas medyo agresibo ng ating uh, literature at this time. Now, the period of activism, 1970 to 1972. After this, the period of the new society, we're slowly regaining our own identity from the period of activism, 1972 to 1980. All right, almost my timeline. Poems dealt with patience, hello, Bring it back to 1980, regard for native culture, customs, and the beauties of nature and surroundings. Newspapers done new forms. And bago pa ating mga pahayagan sa panahon na ito. News and economic progress, discipline, culture, tourism, and like were favored more than the sensationalized reporting of killings, rape, and robberies. Filipinos before were hooked in reading magazine, magazines and comic books or comics. Also na po ang mga comics during this time. Following the uh, period of the new society would be the period of the Third Republic. Okay, my timeline. <laughs> I was already born in this period, 1982, okay, 1981 to 1985. And during this time, the Third Republic uh, poems were very romantic and revolutionary. So don't be misled by the word romantic. Now, when we talk about romantic or romanticism, it is uh, giving 
high reverence to uh, something, no, anything other than love. Hindi po ito yung pagiging uh, just being uh, romantic po, no? If you are upholding truth, justice, a freedom, you are also being romantic. And of course, uh, all the poems here also are revolutionary. Many Filipino songs dealt with themes that were true to life, like those of grief, poverty, aspirations for freedom, love of God, of country, and of fellow men. All right. Move on to tayo sa post revolution 1986 to 1995. Uh, we have overcome one of, again, one of the darkest uh, parts of our history and of course of our literature. But still, uh, as a revolution, ideas are still with us. Once more, the Filipino people regained their independence, which they lost 20 years ago. In four days from February 21 to 25, 1986, the so-called people, people power lakas ng bayan prevailed. Ayan. In the short span of existence of the real public of the Philippines, several changes already became evident. It was noticed in the new Filipino songs, newspapers, speeches, and even in the television programs. So fresh, very fresh pa po ang ating uh, EDSA revolution this time, no? from 1986 to 1995. So ating pong literary forms ay saturated by the EDSA revolution. Now comes our 21st century period. Uh, most of senior high school learners uh, online are uh, very aware of this period or the 21st 21st century literature. Ito na po yan. The new trends have been used and introduced to meet the needs and tastes of the new generation. 21st century learners are demanded to be ICT. Ayan na po. Pasok na si ICT inclined to compete with the style and format of writing as well. New codes or lingos are used to add flavor in the literary pages to teach nowadays. Ayan. So the, the hardest thing to teach our 21st century learners of literature Nowadays would be the appreciation, ano? Na saturate po kasi sila ng uh, technology, no? Ng, ng digital digital age, no? At uh, napakahirap talaga ituro. But if we try to incorporate ICT, which they are very inclined with, I think we'll be uh, just fine. Uh, teachers, my co-teachers who are uh, having the same subject or teaching the same subject. Okay. Post SR revolution, nineteen. I think this is a, uh, sorry, sorry. Bro. Now, we'll have a little activity. It's called the thinker's view. No? Um, this will now be our second uh, objective for today, which is our uh, uh, enabling us to, uh, this, we'll try to our best to write or conduct a close analysis or critical interpretation of a certain text. This time, uh, we'll, be, we'll be having a sample of Filipino folktale in the pre-Spanish period, okay? So after we read, you read along with me, we're going to answer the questions that follow, okay? This uh, folktale is entitled The Sun and the Moon. It's from our Tingian brother. It's a Tingian folktale. It goes like this. In the olden days, like the moon, the sun had also star children, which were yellowish in color very bright and very hot the star children of the moon however were reddish and cool the moon was scared that the stars would wither and die if they play with the star children of the sun the moon suggested to the sun that they kill their children who were crowding the heavens with their number when the sun had killed her children the moon nearly hid behind the cloud in the evening when the clouds faded the moon stars appeared this angered the sun, so it gave chase to the moon. Thus, when he overtakes the moon, we have the so-called eclipse. Every morning, the sun kills the moon stars that he catches. Until now, this chase continues, and because the moon still continues. There you have it, the short uh, Indian folk tale, Sun and the Moon. This is during the pre-Spanish period. Wala pa po tayo mga conquerors at this time. So our, we have our own flourishing literature at this uh, very period. Okay, let's have an analysis of this uh, piece of literary text through a series of questions. Question number one, uh, you may comment your answer. You type your answer to the comment box. 
sa ating pong senior, senior high school learners. First question, what is the concern of the moon regarding his star? Okay. Now, if you are reading closely, we can answer this. We can answer this by using the text itself. So, what is the concern? Balik po natin dito ah, sa ating uh, the sun and the moon. Ayan. Nababasa po ba siya? Ayan. Basically, uh, it's a story about what? Ayan. Uh, okay, let's try to answer the first question po. The correct answer for this one, taken from the text itself, would be the moon was scared that his stars would wither and die if they play with the star children of the sun. Ayan po, no? Yan po yung concern ni, uh, ng, uh, ng moon regarding his star. No? He was scared that his stars would wither and die if they play with the star children of the sun. Okay, that is the main concern of uh, the moon. So question number two. Why does the moon anger the sun? So based from the story, bakit nagalit si moon kay sun? Okay. Again, we're going to answer this using the text itself. From the text itself, ito po yung inyong sagot, you are the right place. The moon suggested to the sun that they kill their children who were crowding the heaven with their number. When the sun had killed her children, the moon merely hid behind the cloud. Tago siya, no? Tapos mamatay yung kanyang mga anak ng araw. In the evening, when the clouds faded, Ayun, the moon stars appeared. No, basta mo yung mga anak. Yun. Okay? So, kahit sino namang mother, magagalit talaga pag ganito ang ginawa sa'yo. Okay? So, that's the reason why the moon angered the sun. Third question. Okay? Since the people during this time ay hindi po nila kaya ipaliwanag ang mga natural phenomena, what particular phenomenon is described? in the folk, the Filipino folk tale. During this time, uh, they try to explain the phenomena or the events that occur in their natural world through their folk tale. So what do you think is the, that particular phenomenon being described in this Filipino folk tale, the sun and the moon? Okay, if you answered eclipse, you are correct. Huh? Okay. So then let us now move on to the second part of our lesson, which is we try to identify representative texts from the regions. And for this particular online tutorial class, we go to region one, uh, which is also known as the Ilocano, Ilocano region, the Ilocos region. Okay. Uh, we will have, have a taste of the uh, a certain poem from region one from, uh, I think Carlos Angeles, yeah, okay. uh, the author would be Carlos Angeles, and the title of the poem would be Gabu. Yeah, no? Gabu depicts a coastline in Ilocos that is constantly experiencing the battering restlessness of the sea. Okay, so for those who are, uh, who grew up, used to grow, grow up in uh, places near the sea or coastlines in the Philippines, I think you're very familiar with this experience. The, the water that comes back to the shore seems furious and ruthless with its day-long bashing, which havocs the wasteland. Being an archipelagic country, the Philippines knows the importance of water in the sea. I myself grew up uh, in a place near the coastline, and during the stormy season, I experienced these kinds of battering, a battering restlessness from the sea itself. Okay? So, let us uh, read the poem Gabu by Carlos A. Angeles. First stanza. The battering restlessness of the sea insists a tidal fury upon the beach. At Gabu, in its pure consistency, havocs the wasteland hard within its reach. Brutal the day-long bashing of its heart against the seascape where, for miles around, farther than sight itself, the rock stones part. And the drop into the elemental wound. 
The waste of centuries is gray and dead, and neutral where the sea has peached its brine, where the spilt salt of its heart lies spread. Among the dark habiliments of time, the vital splendor misses, for here, here, at Gabu, where the ageless tide recurs, all things forfeited are most loved and dear. The last line would be, it is the sea pursues the habit of shore. All right. So talk about it. Uh, the main uh, the main element that we're going to give focus on this poem today is what we call imagery. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, most important poetic elements that uh, makes the learning of poems, poetry uh, really uh, easier is if we master imagery. So what is imagery? Imagery is a poetic element that tries to create a picture in the mind of the reader or a mental image through the use of figure of language or the use of figures of speech. It represents objects, places, ideas, or even actions that appeal to the senses of the reader. Now, that, that allows us to create mental pictures in our mind when we are reading a poem so that we can understand it better. So let's try this one with this, uh, with this uh, series of questions. Number one. What image does the poem Gabu try to create? All right. Let's go back to the poem again. Let's see here. Uh, now, the battered restlessness of the sea insists that I look here upon the beach of Gabu and its pure consistency had looks the wasteland hard within its beach. Okay. If you're going to internalize this, what could be the, the main picture that you can build or the main image you can build in your mind. You have read this certain line here. So if your answer to the first question would be, what image does the poem Gabo try to create? Gabo depicts a coastline in Ilocos that is constantly experiencing the battering restlessness of the sea. All right. No? Yung po ang inyong sagot, or malapit ten, very good po kayo. And what second question would be, which word or group of words from the poem help you form this image? Yung kanina kung nabuo natin, no? And then later on, if you have, uh, if you're going to have the, the actual class, you can draw this in a separate sheet of paper. So let's try to answer this. Kanina nabuo natin yung image na. It depicts a coastline in the logs that is constantly experiencing the battering restlessness of the sea. Ayan po yung ating uh, image. So ano naman po yung word or group of words from the poem that help you as the learner uh, come up with this image and will enable you to draw this if you will be able to, uh, you will be asked to on a separate sheet of paper. The suggested answer would be the words, the battering restlessness of the sea insists a tidal fury upon the beach. Ayan. Hindi po bang nakita ninyo? Kaya uh, nakatulog sa inyo para mo yung image na yung kanina. Now, if you're going to try to draw this one, ito po yung pinakamalapit na image na makikita natin sa drawing niya, if ever. Suggested image. This is just a suggested image. Ayan. If you're familiar with that one, uh, especially during the stormy season, ayan po ang ating makikita. See, the battering restlessness of the sea insists a tidal fury upon the beach. Upon the beach. So there goes your fury and the battering restlessness from the sea. Okay, before I end up this uh, E2Li online tutorial, there are certain things that uh, we need to remember from this class. Number one is that pre Spanish literature is characterized by legends, folk tales, the epic age and folk song. Number two, the propaganda movement from 1872 to 1896 was spearheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class. Okay, we have Mosa Rizal, Marcelo Del Pilar, Graciano Lopez Jaina, Antonio Lima, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Pangliban, and Pedro Papel. Number three, in the American regime, Americans influenced Filipino writers to write using the English language. English as a medium of instruction was introduced in the schools as the intellectual language of education. Part one, in the period of activism, 
campus newspapers were written to show their protest. Sino po nagsimula ang ating uh, pagiging aktivista? They held pens and wrote on placards in red paint. Ayan po. Nagsimula yung ating red paint in the equivalent of the word makibaka. English to dare. Ayan po. Naging daring na po ang ating mga youth at this, very moment, at this, at this period. Fifth one, here that the new society poems dealt with patience, regard for native culture, customs, and the beauties of nature and surroundings. Number six, the period of the Third Republic was romantic and revolutionary. Post as someone noticed in the new Filipino songs, in the newspapers, the changes, in the speeches, and even in the television programs. Imagery is a poetic element. Please remember this, that tries to create a picture in the mind of a reader or a mental image through the use of figurative language or figures of speech. And of course, the, 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 the poem that we had uh, a while ago, entitled Gabu, depicts a coastline in Ilocos that is constantly experiencing the battering restlessness of the sea. And so this is your uh, tutor Dick saying uh, to, to, our, to all our learners, keep reading, keep loving, but always keep right. So God be the glory po. Thank you for being with me today in this online tutorial class. Mabuhay po kayo lahat. Magandang araw! April and Marcus po ang inyong pretty ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapagkusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also our fresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryong ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our depth at EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, DepEd Tayo and DepEd Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado!